Before we get started, is there anyone that has any prayer requests? Yeah, Brother Green, uh, and how y'all doing, Saints? I'm going to ask prayer. Brother David Williams is asking for prayer, uh, for uh, strength, and also um, Sister Cynthia, my wife, will be having uh, going to a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Keep her in prayer, and also a sister in Christ, Glenda Felder. We want to pray for her mom. Thank you, there, Brother uh, Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? Yes, my brother, I do. Uh, would you all please keep me and my wife in prayer that we stay focused on the things of God and not allow the distractions of the world to interfere with what God has called us to do? Uh, most definitely, brothers. Uh, I see your hand, Brother Crosby. You have a prayer request? Excuse me. Okay. Um, is there anyone else before we get started has a prayer request? He's asking for prayer for the King family. Is there anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? If not, I'm going to ask... Um, Brother uh, Leslie, if you don't mind, brother, would you open us up with a word of prayer, please? All right. Um, brother Stevenson, the first person you mentioned is David, right? Yes, sir, my brother. Brother David Williams, he's sitting here. Um, this is yes. David Williams yes. for strength in his body. That's it, I guess. Then the last one, the name of the last person is? Uh, if Her name is Glenda Felder, but it's actually her mother. Glenda okay. Felder's mother. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Let us pray, brethren. Our Father in heaven, a compassionate God, the Most High, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we come before you this day at this time that we have gathered together to study your word. Father, we are praying, thanking you for all you've done for us. We say may your name be highly exalted. We have gathered this time to study your word from the book of Daniel to see how to make better use of your word and impact our lives positively. We pray that may you be with us as we study, be with your servants that will be speaking and every one of us that we would understand. Also that we would be able to utilize the word as well as um, affect others positively with them. We have certain requests to tender before you this time, Father. We're praying for our brother Stevenson, your servant who has been working in your kingdom. Uh, we're praying for his wife who has, who will be having an appointment with the doctor. Father, we're praying that may you continue to be with her and help that whatever uh, reason she would be going there, may you help that all things will come out for joy and will be happy and they would have the cause to glorify your holy name. Continue to be with the family. Be with him as he preaches your word and continue to strengthen him. Uh, we wrestle not against, against flesh and blood, Father, especially those who are your servants. They meet with several opposition. We are praying that may you continue to strengthen him and his wife as well as children that they would continue to be strong and encourage one another to carry out your work. We also pray for Brother David Williams for strength, both physically and spiritually. Father, we pray may you continue to strengthen him and help him in all he would be needing, oh Lord. Help him to stand firm in your word and continue to serve you from faith to faith and do not allow him to derail. Also, we commend the sister Glenda's mother who has been mentioned into your hands. You know, whatever situation that they are in, Father, we are praying that may you be with them and take absolute control that they will all have the cause to glorify your holy name. We also pray for Brother, Brother Donald Valer, who is also one of the shepherds in the congregation, Father. We are praying that may you continue to be with him and his family and help them in all they would be needing. Continue to strengthen them and give them the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding to direct your flock and also uh, carry out their activities as they should Above all, that heaven will be our goal and that we will do all that is right, Father. 
continue to be with them and bless them in abundance or that they would be needing. We also have a request here for uh, prayers for the family of the king. Uh, Father, you know them better than we do. We are praying that whatever they would be needing, that may you provide for them and be with them. Every one of us, Father, we also commit into our, into ourselves into your hands that may you be with us and bless us abundantly. Help us to study accordingly tonight. And continue to allow us to shine as light to the world that when they see our good works, they will glorify you. Forgive us in any area we might have sinned against you, O oh Lord. All this we pray, believing with full confidence and hope that you are going to do unto us even beyond our request. For we have humbly prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, preacher. Amen, my brother. Thank you for that prayer, Brother Leslie. Once again, we're in um, Daniel chapter 4, and I'm going to ask Brother Coffee, if you don't mind, Brother, would you take um, verses 1 through 5 for us, please? And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all the people, nations, languages that dwell in, the, in all the earth, peace multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show you the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought towards me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom, is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my own house and flourishing uh, in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Thank you for that, Brother Coffee. Is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Yeah, I'd just uh, like to remind us that uh, the book of Daniel is about God is in control and God takes care of his people. Now, you remember who we're, I want you to get who's talking here in Daniel chapter 4. This is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is talking to Daniel. This is his writing, his own account of the experience that he has gone through because of God. And so remember, this is the same Dan, uh, Nebuchadnezzar that we last read in chapter four uh, about, you know, you remember where he, I mean, in chapter three, where he was throwing uh, the, the children of Israel into the, uh, in the fiery furnace is the same Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter two uh, that had the vision of the, of the statue. And now we find him here. And really, this is going to be the last time I think we're going to see him uh, mentioned, at least his, you know, his life mentioned uh, will be talked about in chapter five, but him living here in chapter four. Uh, but he still had not got it. Uh, what I mean is he was still lifted up with pride, uh, even though he knew some things about God you know, through the visions uh, that uh, Daniel allowed him to interpret and then even through the the rescue of god he knew god was able to deliver from the fire but he still uh had this this mentality of pride and so what he's giving as i mentioned in chapter four is his own account of how god had to deal with him to get him to be humble uh, to understand that god rules in the in the in the kingdoms and the kingdoms of men and I think this is powerful, man, when you really think about it, because remember, this guy's a, a Gentile. Uh, but it just goes to show uh, that God can take uh, anyone who's full of pride uh, and he can bring them to their knees, humble them, and then he can use them if they want to be used. And so I just want us to keep that in mind as we go through this uh, through this chapter, because I want us to keep in mind that this is actually Nebuchadnezzar who's speaking and giving his own account of his own experience that God uh, had brought upon him to humble him. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, uh, Brother Nick, could you please take verses 6 through 10 for us, please? Yes, sir. Verse 6, therefore made I, <clears throat> so let me start again. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, 
that they might know, make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me their interpretation thereof. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, Cesar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretations thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head. In my bed I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. Thank you for that, Brother Nick. Is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that have been read? Do y'all see him showing himself again, how he still had not come to the full understanding of who God was, even through the past experiences? Notice what's happened. He's had another dream. He's had another dream. Uh, and notice what he does. He done, He's doing what he had done before. What does he do? In verse 6, as was read, after he has his dream, he makes a decree to bring in. Where have we seen this before? The wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me and interpret their dream. Then came, notice he bring in verse 7. The magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And he told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Duh. I mean, you would think he would have gotten that back in Daniel chapter 2, right? And so he has his other dream. He still brings in these 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 other false uh, 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 astrologers and soothsayers who lied to him. And as he already or should have already known that they could not uh, give him the information that he needed. So what does he do at the last? He does what he should have done at the first. And that is he brings Daniel in. Verse 8 says he brought Daniel in. Daniel came in before him. Now notice it. This is him talking, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. Now remember, he's telling this story. He's telling us now why he named Daniel what he named him. I brought in this guy. I named him after my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And so still he, he he's showing that I still have not got it. My mind still is not to the point to where I understand there is only one true and living God. And so he says he told the dream uh, to to Belshazzar, which we know uh, to be to be Daniel. Okay, definitely he's afraid and troubled like he was at the last dream, at the first dream. He's afraid they're, they're afraid and he's troubled just like he was when he had the the dream of the the statue. Uh, this is going to be a different type of dream that he's going to have, and it's going to be. It's going to be very interesting to see how, and, and I know y'all probably already read it, how God's going to, uh, going to hum, humble him. And we're also going to see the power of the God that we serve as well. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, Brother Stevenson, if you don't mind, could you please take verses 11 through 15 for us, please? He said, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof, and all the flesh was fed of it. I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Thus, Hew down the tree, cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Lest, uh, let the beast get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. And, and so remember back in verse number 10, this is what he dreamed about. He said, I saw a tree in the midst of the earth. In verse 10, and the height thereof was great. This is representing him again. It's representing him and Babylon, how God had made him great, uh, how people looked to them for food. Babylon is the world power. And so people are looking for them for food and for protection. Again, this is representing who he was. You know, everything uh, that he had, uh, the power and the, and the prestige, all of this was uh, given to him. Uh, uh, by God and that's what he's showing here but in verse 13 he says I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher now this this see this is the idea this is an angel he, uh, he saw in the vision an angel a holy one came down from heaven he cried aloud said dust cut the tree down see this is God watching 
to you. You're, yeah, you're, you're strong. You're in control. You have power. But I think we understand this. All power comes from God. And so here you are. You're lifted up with pride. And he's going to say this in a few moments. He's going to talk about some things that he said. But what God is showing him in his vision, that he has a watcher watching you at all times. And by God watching him and knowing him, this watcher or this angel is going to tell him in his dream, hey, cut it down. Cut it down. Cut down. Uh, the, the provisions that God has provided him with, uh, let everybody get away from him. Uh, but but st still, he's going to leave a stump of roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass. Well, why leave a stump? Well, because understand, God can tear down to build you up. God always, if God doesn't kill you, let me make sure we get there. If God doesn't kill us, uh, then he, there's still hope for us. You know, if God doesn't kill us for our sins, but allow us to go through some things without taking our life or allowing our lives to be taken, uh, then there's still hope. And so this is the idea behind, oh, I'm going to leave a stump behind. You know, I'm going to leave this behind for you because uh, uh, God knows, you. hey, you need to fix this thing. You get it right, I can establish you and put you back on your throne. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Yeah, but the latter part of verse 15, God's telling us too, he's going to make sure that his portion, when he does tear him down, is going to be like the beast in the field. God God is going to uh, have Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to take tell you what God's going to do. He's going to take his human mindset, since you're acting like an animal, God's going to cause you to be like an animal. Have the mindset of an animal. You know, and, and this is not foreign to New Testament Christianity when you, especially when you read Romans chapter one. You know, when you, people refuse to be thankful for what God has blessed us with and what God has done. Well, what the Bible says through Paul is God turns you over to a reprobate mind. And this is what we're seeing in our society today. People acting like animals. That's exactly what we're acting like. We're acting like we're no different than the animals that God created with us on the sixth day. See, we're not animals, but there are a lot of us acting like animals, men with men, women with women. That kind, that kind of foolishness is what we're seeing, but it's just simply what we're seeing is what's the, what I call the passive wrath of God. He'll turn you over to do whatever you want to do, just like animals. They're able to do whatever they want to do. Um, but at the end of the day, God's going to deal with us as, as mankind. He's going to deal with uh, Nebuchadnezzar in this, in this chapter. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, Brother Lewis, if you don't mind, would you take verses 16 through 24, please? Yes, verse 16. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord. The dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth. Thank you for that, um, Brother Lewis. Is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Go ahead, Brother Coffey. Um, what, what I'm noticing, especially in these last several verses of scripture here, is we understand that God is not speaking to us through dreams. But the fact that God has given Daniel the, the understanding of the dream, which is, which when I look at it, is the wisdom of God.
being able, he's being able to interpret what is being said. And it's the same way in which how, how Nebuchadnezzar now is looking to, you know, God's leader as much as the world should, we should be uh, speaking in the same manner in a way of making sense to the world, why things are going in this manner. And so I just see this correlation between uh, Daniel's communication from God to Nebuchadnezzar, but yet ourselves who are um, God's ambassadors, we should be using the, the, the same spiritual wisdom of giving the world the understanding as that great message you uh, taught, I believe it was on Friday evening, about why things are going on. Um, they should be really looking to us, but we need to be ready to give those answers if we're asked, is my comment. Thank you for that, Brother Coffee. I see your hand, Brother Nick. Go ahead. Yeah, my question was uh, in 16 and 17, at the end of 16 and 17, um, when it says, and let seven times pass over him, this matter is by the decree of the watchers, which are, I believe, the angels. Is that just saying, um, like, when God dispatches angels to, like, sending angels and have them passing over seven times? Is that what that's talking about? No, yeah, right. just, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Brother Stevenson. No, that, uh, that seven times just means seven seasons or seven years. So when he's saying, um, let seven times pass over here, this is going to take place in, in, um, Nebuchadnezzar is going to go through this for seven years. Okay. Go ahead, so, okay. Go ahead, brother. I was just wondering about the decree, the decree of watchers. What, what is, that's really the question is this matter is by the decree of the watchers. So is this saying that the, so if he's going through it for seven years, so what is the why the angels are in charge of him? Or what hey, what he's saying? Saying? remember, this is still Nebuchadnezzar talking. I want to make sure it's Nebuchadnezzar talking, but now what he's telling Daniel, he's explaining this, his dream to Daniel. But these verses that you're you're talking about, sixteen and seventeen, are still words that he remembered from the dream that the angel said. See, this is what 16 said. The angel in his dream talked to him and told him what we read it. Let his heart be changed from that. See, remember, he's talking to Daniel. Let his heart. But the angel told him this in the dream. This is what he saw the angel saying to the tree. Let his heart be changed from man's and let his beast's heart be given unto him. Let seven times pass over. And so the seven times, seven season. Uh, and it's representing him. He represents this tree. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, of the angels. So God, you know, uh, God's angels. And the demand by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. This is still what the angel is saying in his dream. He's explaining all this to Daniel. Uh, ruleth in the kingdom of men. And verse 17 is the key verse, really, through the rest of the whole book of Daniel. Everything that God is doing through this book is so that everybody will know that he rules in the kingdom of men. And he'll give whoever he will and set it up whoever he will of the basis of men. That is really what the whole book of Daniel is all about. It's never about you, your accomplishments, what you've done. If you're in a position, just know this, brothers and sisters, God allowed you to be in there. Now, we can go vote. You can vote all you want, and you should. If you vote, that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't vote. You, this shouldn't stop you from voting. You still do your part. But at the end of the day, the powers that be are ordained of God. And that's At the end of the day, there is nothing that happens in this world, uh, no government that God does not allow to happen. And, and that's just not in America. That's in any land of the world that you and I live in. And so this is what he's doing. He, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he's telling Daniel this dream. So in verse 18, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. So he's explaining. Now, now he's going to tell Daniel. Now, I've told you the dream. Now, Belzar declare the interpretation thereof. And you look at verse number 19, when Daniel hears it, because he understands what this means. He has to sit there for about an hour. He's like, wow, man, God is in the handle you do. I mean, an hour, he's not saying nothing for one hour when he hears this, because God has revealed to him what he's about to do to Nebuchadnezzar. And so, Bel, uh, so Nebuchadnezzar looks at him and say, go ahead and tell Tell me what God says. You know, don't be astonished. Just go ahead and just give it to me. D deliver the mail. Just deliver the mail. That's simply what he's telling him. Because, you know, don't be troubled. Just tell me what, what God said. But you, you're going to see what's interesting. And, and, and I don't want to steal the thunder of the next read, but what's going to be interesting, even though 
uh, Daniel's going to interpret this dream for him and tell him what God's going to do. God's not going to act immediately. See, that's a problem with a lot of people. You know, we think because God don't execute speedily what he's promised that, oh, he's for God or he ain't going to do what he's going to do. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar is going to be because it's going to be about a year go by before this interpretation that Daniel gives him is going to be fulfilled. So he's living life again, still think he got it going on like God ain't going to do. That's how people live today. Been talking about Jesus coming back for over 2,000 years. How many of us still acting up, acting crazy? Still ain't clean, cleaning up our house, doing what we need to do. And it's the long suffering of God. But just rest assured this, brothers and sisters, and I'll make sure I get this as well as you and as well as you, that God will keep his promise. And that's just not his promise to forgive us when we ask for forgiveness of sin. He also promised if we don't repent, he's going to throw us in hell. That's a promise, too. So we always like to talk about and think about the good promise. Yeah, God's promise he'll forgive. God promise he love. Yeah, God also promised if you don't repent, you're going to hell. If you don't humble yourself, if you don't fix your issues, you're going to hell. That's a promise, too. If you don't obey the gospel, you're going to hell. Those are promises. And so I hope we don't ever forget that as we trod and navigate ourselves through this life. Okay. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Oh, can I say this too? Because he read verse 19. Verse 19, I want you to look at the latter part as we're studying this. I'm going to read 19 again because I like it. Then Daniel, whose name was Batelzazar, was astonished, you know, when he heard me, he's done with his dream, for one hour. And his thoughts troubled him. You know, man, my goodness, God, you finna do this to this dude? The king spake and said, Batelzazar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof, don't let it trouble you. Batelzazar answered and said, my lord, the dream be to them that hate you and the interpretation thereof to your enemies. What is he saying there? This ain't a good dream. He said, this dream that you just dreamed, the only one going to be happy about it is your enemies and people that don't like you. <laughs> he said, this dream is for your enemies and the people that hate you because God finna handle you, dude. So whoever you've been treating unrighteous, acting crazy with, what he's saying is, man, this dream is for them. You know, because uh, cause God finna deal with you. You know, you know brother and sister, we got to, we got to make sure, you know, and again, we all fall short of the glory of God. But just just know this living righteous. You 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 we always going to have people that will hate us because you're different because you you point out sin. This is why we have to all not, we all have to be careful that we live lives to where our enemies can't triumph over us so that they don't mock you so they don't mock your God. So that they don't laugh at you. You know, we when we started this Christian race, for those of us are Christians, we promised to build and live lives for God. We got to be making efforts to finish this, to finish the race, to finish the commitment that we made to God and be faithful unto death. You know, one of the things the psalmist said in Psalms 25, and I'll give this and I'll shut up. That Psalms 25, the psalmist said this, and this is a psalm of David. He says in verse one and two. He says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He says, oh, my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Isn't that amazing? Don't let me be ashamed. Don't let my enemies triumph over me. And so the idea, we want to live lives in such a way that we represent God to the best of our ability so that our enemies are not laughing and mocking when you do fall. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, I'm going to ask Sister Stevenson, if you don't mind, could you take verses 21 through 25 for us, please? Sir, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatest is grown, for thy greatness is grown, and reach it unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. 
And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Thank you, Sister Stevenson. Is there anyone yeah. that has any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that's been read? Are there any questions or comments? Go ahead, Sister Dino. I have a quick question. So in verse 23, when it's talking about hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass, is that is that talking about how, you know, even though Nebuchadnezzar is going to be like an animal for seven years, there's still going to be like there's still going to be a, a reigning there in, Bab in Babylon because doesn't doesn't the Lord take him down and then he allows him to go back back up to his seat? Yeah, he represents the stump. He is that stump. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he, he represents that stump the, uh, and the roots that God is going to leave in the ground with a band of, uh, of iron and, and brass. Uh, yeah, he represents that kingdom. And so God's going to, like you mentioned, he's going to bring him, uh, into this, into this field and, and with this mind of an animal for seven seasons. And, uh, but then God's going to put him back. He's going to put him back there. See, what we're going to see, and I'll just go ahead and say this at the end, you know, this guy is going to become a believer. Now, now, does he stay faithful or not? I don't know the end of the story, but from what we're going to see in the scriptures, after God handles him these seven years, he's going to get it. Yeah. He, he's going to, he, he's going to, he's going to get it and understand that he is where he is. He has what he has only because God. Again, we got to see what the what, what God what God is saying here in this text. He, he's saying the reason he's going to do that to you know that the Most High, the latter part of verse twenty five, he ruled in the kingdom and he give it to whomsoever he will. See, there may even been some people that didn't like the fact that he's coming back on the throne. Well, they're going to have a problem because if God puts him there, it don't, it don't matter what they think about him or what anybody else thinks about him. If God allows him to be there, there's a purpose behind it. And so what God is saying, yeah, you're the root. You're the stump. You're the one the dew is going to fall on because we're going to see what God's going to do. He's going to be living like an animal out there, dew falling on him, nails going to be like claws and, and, and whatnot. But then God's going to change his mind again uh, once he fixed what he needs to be fixed in his heart. And he's going to set him back up on this throne to become this tree to rise him up again. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. I'll see your hand, Brother Coffee. Go ahead. Oh, I've just lost my train of thought. I, I'll come back. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? I got it, Brother Green. Go uh, ahead, what, Brother what, what, I'm, what I'm also noticing here is um, how, I don't know if the word patient or long-suffering um, God is towards Nebuchadnezzar. But it's almost, it reminds me of when it, what it says in Romans 16, 17, you'll mock those, that we have brethren screaming from the rooftop for our brethren to get their act together on their doctrines. And yet, I don't know if it's to say at, at, at what point will God's judgment come upon our brethren who are being stubborn who are not recognizing Zoom worship and all the other things that they're talking about. Um, it, it just reminded me of, of I'm just you know making a point that the radio broadcast is screaming loud, change your ways, change your ways, change your ways, and not heeding to the warning. And this is what happens when pride and arrogance and, and boasting and dealing, having knowledge and, and we get so far, we get so caught up into ourselves. 
and to where th this right here just reminds me of what um, what we're seeing playing out in this dispensation of time uh, with some of our brethren in the large church is my comment. Thank you for that, Brother Coffee. I've seen your hand, Sister Stevens. And did you still have something you want to say? No, sir. It was answered. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Brother, so, so what we're seeing from Nebuchadnezzar is one of Satan's greatest tools that he uses to attack all of us today. Remember this. Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh pride of life please don't ever forget that proverbs 16 and 18 solomon says this pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall you know this is why lucifer and the angel were cast out of heaven pride they want to be in the position of christ you will always have men who want other men to worship them. You're going to always have people around think that they know more than everybody else and you can't tell them nothing. That's just a ploy of the devil. That's, that's how the devil operates. To get you to think that you're greater than God and you're greater than everybody else. Nobody else can teach me. I can't learn from anybody else. Don't tell me what God says. I've been in this longer than you. This is why many of them go to schools. I got my degree. I'm a doctor. I've got my master's. But in Christianity, in, in Christianity, in the church, there should be none of that. None of that. Flattering titles. Big eyes, little use. I've got all the answers. No one else can help me. I don't want to listen to God. Pride going before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And so, you know, you're right, Brother Coffee. These guys, you know, they're gonna always have people, you know, who you can show them the scriptures and they don't they don't care because I have a different agenda. I've got what I got in my own power, my own might, my own strength, my own wisdom. And for a lot of people it's gonna take the hand of God, just like it's gonna take with Nebuchadnezzar. To be laid on them and just pray for them again. We don't wish God do this to anybody. I'm gonna just make sure we don't wish God kill anybody. That shouldn't ever be our our mindset, our heart. Our heart should always be that they humble themselves before they do experience the wrath of God. Because my brother says that ain't gonna be nothing to play with. You know, if you experience the wrath of God, that's that, that's that's gonna be nothing nice. And so we don't wish that on anybody, especially our brother. And I hope they fix it because. Uh, because it, it, it's sad what we're seeing in the church today. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, um, I ask Brother Belier, if you don't mind, could you please take verses 16, I mean 26 through 30 for us, please? Yes. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree root, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might and of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Thank you for that, Brother Valir. Is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Go ahead, Brother Valera, I see your hand. Brother Valera, I see your hand. You can go ahead. Your mic is muted, brother. Yes, I wanted to go back to uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 27, when uh, Jehoiakim, uh, the son of uh, Josiah, was king of Judah at the time. 
And when it says in Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 5, it says, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Verse 6, and now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field have I given also to serve him. Verse 7, and all nations shall, shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And when I, when I read that in, and tried to understand here in uh, Jeremiah as Jehoiakim, the son of Joash, he sent out all these messengers and servants uh, from uh, Moab, from uh, the Ammonites and Zidon. And, and it, it is showing us that although King Nebuchadnezzar will rule, there will come a time when many nations will serve themselves of him. That was just a comment I wanted to make. Thank you for that, Brother Valeria. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Uh, yeah. Um, I would like to add in verse 27 where it says, Therefore, King, let my advice be acceptable to you. God has actually given him some time to accept what he's telling this dude. He's telling him to break off your sins by being righteous. You can't pretend anymore. You have to actually be righteous. You got a, your iniquities, okay, by showing mercy, all right? Your iniquities are erased by showing them, uh, iniquities to the poor. Uh, he's given time to do this. All of these warnings, all of his dreams can still be can still be put to to rest if he would say okay lord i am willing to accept what you say and 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 repent from what i've done and if he shows their godly sorrow if he shows that his heart is true then god will not bring none of this to pass but as we know he does not accept the advice and it says at the end of that verse perhaps there will be a lengthening of your prosperity he's telling them what will happen but people sometimes they don't listen and we know he doesn't that's my comment thank you for that brother dave uh go ahead brother coffee um i have a um i have a question brother henry in uh in romans chapter 13 and verse number one when it speaks about when it says let every uh, soul be subject unto the high powers uh, for there is no power but of God. Then it says the powers of that be are ordained of God. So when it talks about the powers, it talks about the authority that's given to the individual that will be reigning in whatever higher power position that there is. Now, is this a position that God appoints this certain individual to that office or is that governed by the people? Uh, or the election of the people to get that individual in place is my com is my question. Yeah, well, the idea that, uh, when we're talking about the, the government of the land, it, it is people that put them in that position. I mean, you know, we have, well, we know in, in the United States we're a democracy, um, but but his his idea is even in the democracy, even in this world, he's talking about government. He's talking about all governments, Christians, and whatever land you live in. You are to be in subjection to the governments of the lands mm -hmm. that you live in, as well as the government of the church, as long as they're not telling you to do anything that goes against God's will. See, this is what we're seeing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel. They're, they're Jews, but they're under a Babylonian government, and they are to, they're to work. Uh, they ought to, they allowed him to change his name. They didn't buff that their names. Their names are changed. Okay, we're cool with it. They're going to their school. They're going to Babylonian college. And so they're getting all this education that we see when we study uh, the book of Daniel. And so those aren't sins. But when it comes to bowing down to false gods, which is what the decrees of the government of the land that they're living in, 
Uh, don't pray to any man, uh, any God but me, as we're going to see Daniel chapter 6. Daniel's going to refuse to do that and be thrown into a lion's den. That's where the line is drawn. But we have to understand in the lands that we live in, when government makes laws, and sometimes they don't make laws we agree with, you know, but the idea you might not like, and I say is you might not like the toll bridge. Stay off of it. I don't like the price. They always going up on the on the price of the toll bridge. Then stay off their toll bridge or pay the money. You might not like the taxes you have to pay uh, for where you live. You know, they go up every year. They write, yeah, but you still uh, you need to pay the taxes or move. You know, that's the idea. You know, I don't like it. They, they want us to pay insurance to drive down the road. Well, you know, stop driving or pay in, get insurance. You know, and so we have to understand the powers that be are ordained of God. And that's what this teaching, the higher powers. For there's no power but of God, but the powers that be are ordained of God. And so, yeah, brother, he's very much talking about government. Uh, in particular, the the government of the land uh, here in Romans 13, but that would also include uh, church government as well. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? If not, I'm going to ask Sister Dina, if you don't mind, would you finish out the chapter for us? Take verses um, 31 through 37, please. All right. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but that, uh, Sister Dina, is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? And this is powerful, isn't it? I mean, this, this, this is, you know, when we look at back at the verses, notice what he was saying. Look at the, the pride he had in verse 30. I have built. You know, uh, and, and again, remember, he's telling his own story to Daniel. I have built my majesty. You know, he's just all about him. It's like the guy in Luke chapter 12. You know, we don't have to go there. But the guy in Luke chapter 12, you know, he's got plenty. And I don't know what I'll do. I think I'll tear my boys down, be a bigger boy and say to my soul, soul, you know, and so it's just all about him. I've got much riches laid up for me. And so it became pride. And then what did Jesus tell him? You fool. You know, this night your soul will be required of you. Who things shall these be, you know, that you've laid up for all these years? And so pride kicks in and uh, with, with Nebuchadnezzar and he's telling his own story. But then he understands that, you know, God gives the kingdom to whoever uh, he who he'll, whoever he'll give it to. You know, and we have a tr we have a lot of trouble with that. A lot of people do with understanding that we're not in control. We like to be in control. Uh, like I said, we like to think we're God when we're not. Uh, we like to think that we have what we have because we did it on our own and we didn't. And so a lot of people have a trouble with submitting to God uh, because of that, that, that pride that, that kicks in. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, God, we know, is, is, is in control. Now, notice what God says. Now, who's going to say to God, what are you doing? 
the idea of who's going to question God. That's what I want to know. Who's going to question God? You know, and really you think about it, that's one of the biggest messages of Job, huh? You know, God give, God takes away. Job starts off, okay, you know, uh, God gives, he takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But then he gets his foolish counsel, you know, from three of his friends, and they get him questioning, you know, well, you must have done something wrong. God, what are you doing punishing somebody righteous? You got to talk crazy. And uh, so God has a talk to Job out of a whirlwind. And so uh, the question is, who are we to tell God when he's over wrong? Who's going to question God? See, what we have to understand, at the end of the day, God is in control and we deserve nothing. I think that's what we don't. I think that's what we fail to see. We think we deserve a lot of things. We think we deserve to have what we have. We deserve to have more. We deserve to go to heaven if we're not careful. But at the end of the day, we don't deserve nothing. We deserve nothing but death. And so anything that we get other than death is a bonus. You know, really, and that's how we have to look at it. And we got to get to a point in our walk with God, all of us, that if God does nothing else for us, he's done enough when he gave his son Jesus, gave us an opportunity to obey and just be members of the church of Christ. And that ought to be, you know, that ought to be good enough, you know, uh, and everything on top of that is, is, is bonus. And so all God is doing in Daniel 4 is destroying pride. That's all he's doing, destroying Nebuchadnezzar's pride and did he do it you better believe he did he destroyed his pride because notice in verse 37 now i never can what does he do after 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 humility and being humble for seven seasons he's telling daniel now i never can praise i extol i honor the king of heaven he ain't talking about no other gods now is he? you don't see none of that in here you know, he said, oh, the, the gods of, of the gods. You don't see, you don't see none of that in here. He called him the king of heaven <laughs> and all whose works are true and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride. Oh, you get it now, huh? You know, it's amazing. Some people got to learn through hard knocks, the school of hard knocks. You know, Romans 15, 4 says this. It says, for whatever things were written, uh, aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that scripture that Paul writes in Romans 15, 4 teaches us, well, what we ought to be doing as Christians, we ought to be learning and living. We learn and then live. But a lot of people have to live and then learn. You know, I can learn and you can, and you and I can, should learn from this that I should not have pride. I don't have to be uh, like an ox for seven years eating grass to know that God is in control. I can read Nebuchadnezzar and, sh and it teaches me that God will deal with anybody who got pride. I don't have to be like Solomon to have all the money in the world to find out uh, that money don't make me happy at the end of the day. That money cannot give me the true happiness, the true peace that I need, because there's a man that already tried that. And he found out at the end of the day, here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. That's the whole we'll duty of man. So why would I want to go out there and try that? Only reason I would do that is either because I don't believe God's word or I think I'm God. I think I'm smarter than God. That's why people do that. Because they think they can outsmart God and, and they don't believe this is the word of God. So they have to live and learn. School of hard knocks. And, uh, and, uh, and some people have to go through it, but uh, nonetheless, God is still a loving God and he's still a holy God and he's still righteous and his judgments are true. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? Is there anyone that have any questions that don't pertain to tonight's study? that they would like to bring to the group at this time. Go ahead, Brother Jared. All right. I got two questions. Now, I want to know, do you still remain friends with an individual if they don't want to hear about the church or the gospel? I mean, that's a good question. That's kind of a, a case by case. I mean, that's a case by case. There's no sin if you do. Luke 15, Jesus sat around sinners, uh, 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 Brother Jared. I want you to know, you can, I got friends that are sinners. 
that have not obeyed the gospel. Talk to them, invite them to gospel meetings. You know, it's really not a blanket policy that you know you're not a sin. You're not in sin if you do, and I can't say you're sinning if you don't. The idea now, you got to again the, the scripture teach this: be not deceived. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. Evil communication does corrupt good manners. So now I'm just saying that now, if you're around people that are influencing you to act like them and to talk like them and to to take away the glory that you should be given that goes to God, then yeah, you don't need to be around them. But remember, we have to be around sinners to teach them. I mean, Luke 15 and verse 1, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear it. So Jesus and Luke 15, 1, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, this man receives sinners and eat with them. So Jesus definitely ate with them, but he never acted like them. Jesus had people that came to him and listened to him uh, and, uh, and and wanted to be around him. And so, you know, you, there's nothing wrong if you got, and I got worldly friends that like being around me and they know where I, they know where I stand. And uh, and that's that should be every Christian. So it's not there's no sin in that, brother. It doesn't have to be a sin to be around sinners.